Hello and welcome to another exciting episode. I'm Kelly with Signature Solar, back with the third part in our series where we've been diving deep into this Clayton home, currently serving as a cutting edge research and development unit by EG4 Electronics. The heart of this home, you may remember, is the revolutionary EG4 18KPV hybrid inverter. In the first part of our series, we explored crucial safety and code compliance issues surrounding our 18K setup. Part two took us through the innovative solutions we implemented to address these challenges, enhancing the system's safety, code compliance, and cost effectiveness. Now in part three, we're poised to uncover the full potential of this setup. Join us as we unveil the reasons behind our commitment to creating a hybrid solar solution that stands out. Let's dive in and discover the power of solar together. If this is your first time here and you're eager to learn more about solar components or installing your own solar system, you're in the right place. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of our future solar insights. For our returning solar enthusiast, it's great to have you back. Let's discover how solar energy can help power a whole home efficiently and effectively. Let's go. We have David back with us again today to help us understand more about what's going on inside this home based on what he helped us set up here outside this home. Yes. Thanks for being back with us again today, David. So while we're here, David, can you help us understand more about what this 18K right here is doing to power this home? Yeah, absolutely. So here we have an 18K PV uh, with two all-weather mount batteries. Uh, this is EG4's ESS system. The 18K PV gets its name from being able to utilize 18 kilowatts worth of PV, as well as having a three kilowatt cushion for whatever you want to use that extra PV for. So max is 21 kilowatts. Uh, we have two all-weather batteries that have a combined amp hour of 560 amp hours and about 28,000 watt hours total. So uh, the nominal AC output on this inverter is 12 kilowatts and we can surge, runtime surge, up to 15 kilowatts for around five minutes. Uh, this is an off-grid system. So obviously with that being an off-grid system, we need battery storage. So these two batteries, uh, per battery, it's 14.3 watt hours. So a combination of about 28.6 watt hours, kilowatt hours total. So. These batteries uh, are very safe and they're very, very smart. Uh, they have built-in BMSs, everything communicates beautifully and the cycle is great, uh, as well as RSD switch. So we, you can see that we have an RSD switch on the side of that inverter. If we enable that, that does actually trip the battery breakers. So if we were to have a problem with the system, we would be able to completely shut down the system. That keeps it really safe. Absolutely. Sure, yeah. And so this can also use the grid as well? Yeah, absolutely. So we have three different forms of power. We have PV, we have batteries, and we have grid. So this is a multimodal inverter with grid interact. So we can sell back. We can even sell back through our batteries and PV if we want to. So what types of functions would we use when we're interacting with the grid? So we can really optimize when we use the grid, uh, whether that be with grid peak shavings, uh, time of use settings where we can uh, set our time of use to charge our batteries or we can also discharge our batteries at specific times to where we can sell back to the grid via our batteries. Okay, what would be the difference between peak shaving and time of use? When would we use those? So peak shaving, uh, it basically prohibits you from using the grid at specific times. So you can set a time, for example, on a peak demand charge. You can even pull your bill and you can ask them, when is my peak demand charge? And they will tell you. Uh, let's just say your peak demand charge uh, around here is from 12, o'clock to three o'clock. Those are the times where energy costs the most. So what we can do is we can go into the system and we can set up and say, I don't want to touch the grid from 12 to three. And we can either A, sell back till we get a higher sell back rate, or we can just stay off grid. Uh, and when you talk about time of use settings uh, and AC charge functions, so basically after a battery has cycled and they're dead and uh, in the morning typically is when they're dead. What we will do is we'll set our time of use settings to charge from 5 to 12 just to get those batteries up and ready to be able to charge as hard as they can with that PV sun coming out. Anytime that you're setting up an off-grid system, you obviously want batteries. Uh, it's not true off-grid without, you know, storage. These batteries here, they're a total of 28,000 watt hours total. So that means that we can run our house off-grid in case the grid does fill completely fine, however we need to. 
And how would we know how long that would last being off-grid? So you just take your, your daily consumption and then you crunch the numbers and you divide and you see what the total capacity of your battery system is, because everyone's different, uh, and you just see what your usage is compares to how long you can go without getting less of that usage on your daily consumption. So for us, it's about two days. Okay, so that's if the grid fails. How do they contribute to the reliability when I'm just wanting to reduce my electricity bill or um, work on getting that net metering, if I'm selling back to the grid, things like that? So if you're wanting to sell back, if you want to get your most bang for your buck, sell back is obviously a good thing. Uh, depending on if you have a good sell back rate or not, people will decide to do it or not. Uh, but with our system, we can actually sell back through our batteries. So if you want, you can charge the batteries up uh, to 100% via PV, and you can set your time of use settings for a force discharge, and you can discharge your batteries back to grid, and you can make a couple extra bucks. Especially when the rates are higher. Obviously. Absolutely, absolutely. That would be what I would want to do for yeah. sure. <laughs> so what would you say would be the primary purpose of this 18K PV in this setup, and how does it enhance the living experience of this Clayton home? So the way we have this system set up is really you want to be as independent as possible. What we have is we have oversized PV, we have a more than enough battery storage, and we also have grid interact with the system. So with that, we can sell back through A or batteries or PV, and we can also be completely independent and off the grid. So if you want to sell back at specific times, you can sell back at specific, specific times if you have a better sell back rate, uh, as well as we can not use a grid uh, if peak demand charges interfere with that. So we are completely isolated if we want to be, as well as completely interactive if we want to be. Sounds like a very versatile solution. Absolutely. So what kind of loads are being managed by this system and is there a need for us to be selective or can all of our loads be run at the same time? Well, with any house, there's a, a, a combination of inductive loads such as, you know, uh, AC units, any kind of surge, uh, washer dryers, water heaters, you know, something that spike up, as well as resistive loads that are on constantly uh, with your lights and, and anything really towards the line of constant power. So with this inverter, we have uh, a surge capacity up to 15K for around five minutes. So all your loads would be fine. Uh, you just don't want to turn all your loads at the same time simultaneously uh, via the breaker, you know. Uh, you want to make sure you turn your breakers on one by one and see if everything's good when you're powering the system on and trying to power your house. We're in idle right now, so we're not powering any loads. We're going to go ahead and turn our load breaker on. Load breaker's on. You can see that we're starting to power our loads. That's just a couple lights. Our PV is powering our loads for right now. And we're still charging our batteries with the extra PV that we have. So we're going to turn a couple things on. Dryer, fridge, startup. All right, so you can see we used a little bit from the grid, but went away quickly. Still powering load with PV. We're charging our batteries just a little bit. We'll go ahead and up the load a little bit more. All right. Loads a bit higher. We're not using any grid because we have it set up to just use PV, power loads, and charge your batteries. This inverter itself will handle uh, the loads that you throw on it because we have already done the math on how much your loads are to adequate to how much your PV is. So we went 130% over as well as with your batteries. So we have more than enough power for you to power all your loads in your house. And so those inductive loads that have that surge, it's, it's ready to handle that. Yeah, so uh, your a AC unit, uh, when it surges on, uh, this is a grid interactive unit. So uh, we will be able to supplement any power that we need via the grid, uh, PV, or batteries. We can use all three of those as a combination to power your loads. For our viewers that are thinking about a similar setup, what are some considerations that they need to keep in mind? Educate yourself with the equipment that you're going to be installing, as well as the NEC, that's a good, you know, that's the code book, that's what we go by, uh, as well as the AHJ. Uh, so everyone has different requirements. So make sure you educate yourself and you're ready to pass that inspection when it does come. And if you don't want to have to worry about all that, you can always hire a professional. Yeah, and Signature Solar had as, as a design team and tech support. Absolutely. You know, we're always there to help as well. Absolutely. Let's take a look at how this system powers various appliances in this home, from kitchen appliances to air conditioning. 
Let's see solar power in action. Let's go. And that wraps up our tour. The 18K PV hybrid inverter is more than just a power source. It's a gateway to sustainable, efficient living. It's the perfect choice for an off-grid setup in locations that require specific certifications or the need to be grid interactive. However, if your focus is specifically an off-grid setup without the need for grid interaction, our 6000 XP may be the most cost-effective option for you. Both the 18K PV and the 6000 XP are high quality, exceptional inverters, each ready to meet your unique energy needs. Whether you're off grid or grid tied, remember that solar power is a versatile and powerful solution for becoming energy independent. Thanks for joining us on this journey today. For more products, installations, tips, tricks, and insights into your solar journey, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you'll get all the latest information. I'm Kelly with Signature Solar, where we believe that solar is for everyone. See you next time. <laughs>